Hey, welcome everyone to another one of my adventure fishing videos. I wanted to share my recent experience. Uh, a few days ago I had a chance to come back down to the Virginia Beach area, get the ski in the water, and take advantage of this 70 degree early November beautiful weather we're having. And it's just so convenient. I keep my ski at uh, Morningstar Marina, which is located in Little Creek. And it gives us basically access to the whole lower Chesapeake Bay. Um, I can go 10 miles to the east and be in the Atlantic Ocean. I can go um, 17 miles and drive along the Virginia Beach. Or I can um, go straight across the bay 20 miles and hit Kipta Peak State Park. But more importantly, I'm less than five miles away from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. And the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel is, is basically a, an 18 mile bridge tunnel that's made up of um, rock islands and um, pylons and it acts like a natural reef system. And it allows us to catch uh, quite a few different species of fish um, from tog, sheephead, flounder, cobia, red drum, black drum, Spanish mackerel, trout, the list goes on. So the uh, tackle shop that I used down here did not have any uh, fiddler crabs. So uh, I know of a spot around the corner that um, I've been able to get fiddler crabs from before um, and uh, I'm going to try that out. If not, I do have shrimp that I uh, brought down with me. Uh, so it will be shrimp unless I can get some crabs. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of salt in the air. Um, so we're pulling into this little spot that I've been able to actually find fiddler crab, you know, usually during the summer uh, and fill up like, you know, a little bucket worth and uh, that's what I take out for and catch sheep head and stuff. Um, but I'm looking around and I'm not hearing anything or seeing anything. Um, so it looks like I'm going to be out of luck here. But I you know I'll spend a minute and and, uh, and and see if I can see any signs of life. And just for you all that don't know, Fiddler Crab um, is sheephead and tog candy. So that's definitely the preferred bait. But I got my shrimp, so let's go ahead and head out to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and uh, see what we can get. Hey, look at there. Well, I've made it out to the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Uh, the very first drop, I actually caught a sea bass. Um, it wasn't too big, but uh, it's nice to always catch something on your very first drop. So as you can see here, I decided to uh, use a, uh, I'm, I have a two ounce bottom sweeper jig, baited with uh, shrimp. The shrimp has definitely thawed out by now. And I'm dropping it down in about 30 feet of water right off this pylon. Uh, the fish finder shows some rock structure below, so um, let's see what we're going to hook up with here. Uh, you can see here that um, I got a nice hit, and uh, I'm thinking, oh, this is my tongue right here call it a day but uh, the way he's pulling it it's not a talk um, and I'm not getting a, a feeling it's a sheep's head either um, so let's let's get this guy to the surface and see, see what's going on
Yep, uh, fishing under the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, you're gonna definitely hear traffic. Uh, it just comes with the territory, but it's fun. It doesn't bother me. I don't even hear it anymore. Uh, anyway, let's get back to this fish. Okay, so it looks like we got a red drum here. Um, he looks like he's going to be a little bit bigger than slot. So uh, in Virginia waters, the uh, I believe the slot limit is that they have to be a minimum of 18 inches to 26 inches. Um, this guy looks to be over 26 inches. Um, I'm going to try to get a measurement on him as soon as I can get him into the ski. But, uh, yeah, I can already tell with my net that he, he's definitely, he's over 30 inches. Wow. So he actually measured out to be uh, right around 32 inches. Uh, not bad for my second fish. Um, uh, beautiful fish. Uh, we're going to get him back in the water and he's off on his way. Okay. Well, hey, we got another sea bass here. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger. Uh, he wound up only being 12 and a half inches. They need to be 13 in order to keep them. But uh, hey, it's promising. Just need a little bit bigger. I have caught bigger sea bass here before. Uh, so uh, again, I'm excited. Uh, let's just get a little bit bigger. So the current uh, definitely picked up uh, outgoing tide. So I had to move a little bit closer to the first island. Uh, and basically the, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel is made up of four islands. And then what happens is um, it, it just nice really rock structure before it goes into the tunnel uh, I've had a lot of luck around here uh, around the islands flounder uh, I've caught cobia here uh, black drum triggerfish all kinds of stuff hey Joe long time no see so uh, I ran into a buddy of mine who I fished with before he has a really cool channel called uh, come on uh, fish one zero one I'll actually leave a link in the description um, but he's actually seeking refuge over here behind uh, the first island to um, uh, get out of the current um, but he's had some luck he has a three keeper tog already he obviously got here a little bit earlier than I did uh, he's only using shrimp as well um, he's just a really cool guy to get to know to talk to um, and Believe it or not, he is the only angler that I know of that has actually caught a full-size tarpon. I believe it was 40 inches or 48 inches in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, uh, he has a video on it. You should definitely go check it out. So I've uh, had great luck in the past um, around these islands uh, for tog. And, and during the summer, when we have good water clarity, um, you can dive here and spearfish. And I've uh, definitely spearfish uh, spade and sheephead right off of these um, rocks.
we are going to get a, another sea bass here. Uh, kind of lost count, um, but I'm having fun. So uh, I didn't realize that my battery had uh, died. Uh, but this is the third tog um, so far, and um, this one is just shy of the 16-inch keeper requirement. It's 15 and a half. Look at those beautiful colors. The others were the similar size, um, but so far no keepers. Uh, I do enjoy fishing this uh, area a lot. Uh, with a jet ski, it's not too bad. I mean, you're just, uh, you got to get used to the break and throttle, kind of going back and forth. Uh, I don't anchor um, off the pylons or nowhere near here. Um, I'll do it off the first islands, like off the rocks, but I won't anchor here. Um, I just got, I've just gotten used to just being able to stay relatively close to the pylons, and I've had success. Um, when you're fishing for tog, Obviously, you're fishing, you know, directly on the bottom, so your chances of being snagged on a jet ski are greatly increased. But uh, for every other species, uh, sheephead, I don't fish right off the bottom. Um, I'm usually good. And with flounder, I really don't have too many issues. Uh, I'll just jig, uh, jig with the current, and I've had a lot of luck catching flounder off the jet ski. Um, but it's getting late in the day, and... Uh, I have to get ready to head back. My marina closes at 4.30, and it's already three, and I wanted to try Little Creek for some uh, speckled trout. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back now. Um, I did wind up catching quite a few speckled trout. Obviously, they were all small. I'm talking like 10 inch, eight inch, so I didn't even wanna add it to the video. But thank you for watching and stuff. I will be back here in another month, and the bite should be better.